All right, so we just got a service call. Um, we got a freezer running warm. Uh, just want to walk up, check my compressors, make sure that they all running. And uh, so far, they look to be all running. Uh, what is that? We're at about 10% on the liquid now. Sight glass. See if it's clear. All right, so sight glass looks clear. Uh, check out our E2. All right, so rack eight is um, right here running at 34 degrees, 34 PSI on the rack, and uh, we're at 38. So we're not too far off. We are maintaining suction set point. If we're not maintaining suction set point, uh, but basically, you know, you have some cases start. All right, so here's my circuit right here. And uh, basically what I want to do is I got one hooked up to my circuit and I got one hooked up to my EPR. And uh, not my EPR, but my suction transducer. So right here we're reading 36. If I go to that computer over there, we should be reading 36 on the computer. Eight, 36. So I don't know if you can see that right there, but 36, that's what that says. So our transducer is reading fine. If it's off by five degrees, you should replace it. Uh, don't put it off set. So basically, our suction transducer is reading right, and uh, we're at 30 and 30. So that tells me that my um, EPR is 100% open. So basically, if the cases come to temp, this valve will close, shutting off the refrigerant flow, allowing, like reducing the amount of refrigerant flow into the case, and basically, you know, it'll wait till the temperature rise. When the temperature rise, this valve will modulate back. And when it's moving back, it's opening, allowing more Freon to get pulled back. And basically, we're uh, maintaining the suction pressure, controlling the temperature, basically. Um, not really like a sore valve, but it's almost like a cylinder. It just uh, open and close, but it modulates. So, like I say, basically, if the case temperature rises, it opens. If the case temperature drops, it closes. And as many of these as what? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a whole bunch of them. As they all close, the transducer sees that, send the signal to the co computer, and then it cycles off the compressor. Say, hey, we don't need uh, that many compressors running. And if the temperature rises, like if the heat load increases in the case, all these compressors will kick on because the temperature will rise. And uh, that controller like calculates called PID. And uh, it, it kind of, you know, stages the compressors to cycle on smoothly and um, have that rack maintain a suction uh, set point. So right now, everything looks good here. I'm gonna see if I can put this through a defrost. All right, so basically, um, when I walked in, I did check the freezer. Uh, the freezer was frozen, it's too evaporated. So um, we gotta figure out why they're freezing up and we gotta also defrost it. So rack A, circuit 32, right there. We hit F3 to get here. So our circuit, we hit enter, hit F5, the setup, we hit F2, go over. And we're just checking out defrost. Um, hot gas defrost, 25 minute duration, uh, 10 minute drip, one minute defrost delay. Uh, I don't know why they have a defrost delay. Uh, I guess that gives it time for the EPR to close 100% so we don't open up and put a lot of pressure on the EPR valve, like, you know, while it's like driving clothes, and all of a sudden just get that rush to refrigerant and put that strain on the motor. So that just give it a few minutes to make sure the valve is um, seated 100% before the defrost turns on. And it also kind of, you know, prevents stress on the compressor. So we got 25 minutes, so it's no defrost uh, termination. Let's just see if we can put it through defrost. Enter, seven, up, oh, controllers, button. Uh-oh, there we go, there we go. It worked. So we got it in defrost. Let's hit defrost. All right, so we're in a pump down mode. 
And um, we should see our EPR starting to close. Um, our EPR is here on our yellow one. So right here, you're going to start to see these pressure go up. And once it goes through high gas default, it's going to go even up. And I also want to make sure that uh, the red one hooked up to my suction header doesn't rise. Because if it rises, tells me that this is not closing. It has a one minute delay. And once that energizes, what we're waiting to see is if this energizes. Um, I normally use like my AMP Pro. Uh, yeah, I think I got it. I could probably show you how I do it. Just clip it right on here. You should get an AMP. Or you can use like a little tool. Uh oh, I heard it energize, so I shouldn't even have to check it. Look at that. Suction pressure is rising. So that cylinder is energizing. Um, we are in defrost. Um, this one didn't rise, so this EPR is 100% closed. If this didn't close all that hot gas, see right here, it's all hot gas from our compressors. So, hot gas. Piped in right here to the compressor. So, that's our hot gas. If this didn't close, all of that hot gas would have poured right into there. And it could have took out the compressors, break them, uh, triple circuit break or anything. So, all right, so, so far we are going in defrost. Uh, but this case here is constantly freezing up. It's an ongoing issue. Uh, it's always a repeat offender. So, I'm just trying to do my best. Check it out, make sure everything's working. All right, so right now I'm standing in front of my DDR valve. Um, we just checked our hot gas cylinder. We know that that's working. So the next thing is we want to make sure this is working. Um, these work together. Um, if this is not working, um, our defrost is not working. So even if the cylinder is getting hot and we feel it hot, all that, yeah, it's hot, it's working. But we're not pushing the hot gas to the case downstairs through the coil back up the liquid line back up into the suction to the header right here so this ddr has to be working so right now i just hooked up on the the inlet and the outlet the outlets here and uh basically you want to see a differential between 16 and 20 and um right now i have my gauges hooked up and everything is on i don't have no differential at all across that um, DDR valve. This cylinder is supposed to de-energize. Uh, when this de when that case, when that energizes, de this de-energizes and it, um, you know, helps give a differential. And the reason why it de-energizes, if I'm not mistaken, it's like a fail safe if, the, uh, if this cylinder goes bad. Normally it's energized and it's holding in the, the plunger or whatever. And uh, when that plunger drops, it creates a differential. So if this solenoid goes bad, it'll drop basically. And uh, the other cases will go into defrost. So like I said, it's like a fail safe. So if that goes bad, we don't have to wake up in the middle of the night uh, defrosting all the cases. But sometimes the differential part of it goes bad and when, once that goes bad and you lose your differential um, you have no choice but to defrost all those cases and then you have to rebuild this pump down the circuit take the gas out and uh, rebuild the DDR so let's figure out why we don't have no differential uh, sound like we got power to it uh, let me use my little app and uh, see if it's energized um dan frost has this cool app that i'm using right now it's the magnetic tool you can find it in google play store also you can find it in the app store for iphone users uh, this is a pretty cool app normally i just put this right up to the solenoid and this little circle in the middle of the screen right here normally starts spinning see there we go 
So you see how that is spinning? All I'm doing is holding my phone right up to the solenoid and this circle is spinning. And uh, that let me know that uh, we have a magnetic field and uh, that that solenoid is energized, it is working. Um, now as I pull away, it stops. So, cool out, man. If you never heard of it, magnetic tool made by Dan Foss. You can find us in the app store. All right, so we know that this is energized. We need to go to our dry contacts at our output board. And uh, we need to check our fail safe. Somebody maybe moved the dip switch. And um, now it's energized when it's in defrost. So let's just find our board and go from there. All right, so here's our boards right here. Um, quite a few boards in here. We got output boards, we got input boards, and we got um, ESR multiplex boards that controls the EPR valves in the back. These are dry contacts, like, um, you know, basically a relay, just a contact that closes, and um, like it's like control voltage, it controls the contact, there's things like that. So it's like low amp. Not like a contact that will power up a compressor. It only send power to like a solenoid or a contactor, something of that nature. Uh, so board seven is up here, and um, it's addressed as board seven. If you look right there, is our dip switches. One is one, one is one, two is two, three is four. So four plus three is seven. So and we're looking for point 0.7 and that's right here that DDR our fuse look good if that fuse blows normally it's the coil uh, on the DDR valve that little solenoid coil the MKC2 or if it's for a compressor or a fan if one of these blows then normally that's the contactor for the fan or the contactor for the compressor if you find one of these blown but as you can look up to the top, the LED is lit. So it looked like it is hooked up. Well, this one only has just a dry contact. And then you have like a little jumper there. And that jumper says normally open. So when that energizes, it closes. So uh, we need to move that jumper right there and then that uh, de-energize our solenoid and then we should be able to get a differential. So let's get a, something safe and uh, let's redo that jumper. Also, you can cut out the control voltage when doing that. Uh, you got control voltage breakers in there, you just gotta pay attention. All right, so as you can see, our DDR is still calling. And if you look right next to it right there, I moved that little um, jumper down to uh, what is that, NC? So common and normally close. So when that um, energizes, it opens and it de-energizes my DDR valve and uh, we should get our differential. O OLDR that goes on a liquid line is opposite when it energizes. So let's just check now. 214 over 226. So now we have differential so that explains why our walk-in freezer is freezing up um, we didn't have no differential across our DDR valve all right so I'm just checking my differential we had what 217 over 30 uh, that ain't bad also I open this up just to see if this been adjusted this is um, valved all the way into the max um, this valve is on its way out uh, most likely it's going to have to be rebuilt soon but right now we do have a good differential across it uh, somebody just uh, flipped the fail safe um, into the wrong uh, position uh, thank god I was able to catch it alright so I'm back in the cooler and I uh, just want to see if that ice melted it looked like it all did uh, there's some of it on the floor right there. Uh, Alright, so just turn my light on. Uh, coils clear of ice. Uh, let's check over here. 
of these hill phoenix evaporators uh, with clear vipes. It look like they got a fan pressure control over there. It's probably jumped out. This is a freezer. Um, I'm not a freezer, but a walk-in cooler with high gas defrost. Uh, it's kind of weird that the fans are running while I was in defrost. But like I said, it is a cooler. It's not a freezer. Maybe that's how they got it programmed in the computer. But uh, I don't got uh, clearance to remove that. So I'm not, I don't really think it's an issue. If it was a freezer, it would be an issue. The fans need to turn off while the freezer is in defrost. So otherwise you have like a whole bunch of water droplets on the top, icicles and stuff like that. So we're gonna head back up to the roof. All right, so I'm back at the E2. And uh, our set point is 32. We're at 59 degrees. Uh, we just came out of defrost. And uh, we can just grab this. And uh, as you can see, it was starting to run high. And then right here, somebody came out and uh, it's been running. And as you can see, it's starting to trend back higher. And uh, now, you know, that was me right here putting in defrost. But like I said, we found the issue our DDR valve right here wasn't de-energizing when the case went in defrost. Uh, the way this one set up is it de-energizes to give you a differential. So uh, I believe I got the problem. Um, I don't think there's a superheat issue or anything. Uh, you can see right after they came here and defrosted, that thing came down immediately. And uh, that's the same thing I'm expecting it to do today. And uh, pretty much gonna go from there.